word of the Lord today comes from the book of Luke. Thank you, musicians, for doing such a marvelous job. We got the best man up here. Y'all sound so wonderful playing under the anointing. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9. Let me read this to you, and then you may have your seats. Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 45, 49 to 55. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, it will appear on the screen. I'm just going to read this in your hearing. Drop these few nuggets with you today. And then we shall move on and see what the Lord will say. The Bible says, And John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And we forbade him because he followeth not with us. And Jesus said, Forbid him not. For he that is not against us is for us. Hallelujah to Jesus. And it came to pass that when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. This is Jesus heading to Jerusalem. And sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when this disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, what will thou, what will thou that we command fire? to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did. Verse 55. But Jesus turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Oh, y'all in trouble today. Today as the Lord leads, I want to speak to you from the subject, Fighting the Wrong Fight. You can fight the wrong fight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need the anointing that makes preaching flow. We thank you, God, for all that has gone forth before. We command and we decree and we declare that your glory will fill this house. Even on today, in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say amen. Fist bump the person on your way to your seat and tell them, fight the right fight. I'm going to go right through my introduction and get right to the points in just a minute. Truth of the matter is, as soldiers, we all have to fight. That is a part of our duty. We've got to fight. There's a reason for the armor. The armor is not fashion wear. The armor is just not so that you won't get sunburned. The purpose of the armor is to protect you as you fight. You'll have to fight offensively, which means you go out and fight the enemy. And then sometimes you'll have to fight defensively in that you'll have to defend against the enemy coming to attack you. Either way, you will need the full armor of God in order to fight. Fighting comes with the territory. I shared last week how I'm so amazed at the people from Ukraine. Now that the war is there, people that never fought before, people that had no training, have decided I can't sit by idly and just allow what's going on around me. I've now got to fight. Could it be that God is trying to show the church a lesson that people who never fought before will now have to fight? And maybe you got all the way to 2022 without fighting. But listen, if you're going to get beyond 2022, you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to fight for your life. You're going to have to fight for your health. You're going to have to fight for your marriage. You're going to have to fight for them kids. You're going to have to fight for your sanity. I can't get no help. I want the people who are fighting right now. In this particular text, Jesus starts out in Luke chapter 9. The text is certainly loaded. He starts off, and he's doing on-the-job training. And he starts off this text stand by saying, I'm going to give you my disciples power. He gave them power and authority 
over unclean spirits and all manner of sicknesses and diseases. That's why you can't afford to walk in with your head down if you don't understand. And it's because you don't understand what you have. God has already released to you the power and the authority over sickness and over unclean spirits. If you do not exercise that authority, it's like having all the medicine in the world in your cabinet, but not drinking it and not taking it in. You've got to exercise the power that God has given you so that when sickness tries to attach itself to you, you know how to rebuke sickness and disease off of your life. When certain spirits come around you that are not of God, you know how to handle those spirits. But we find in this text, in addition to the things that are going on, there's so much you can preach. It is fully loaded. Jesus starts off the feeding of the 5,000, comes up in this. Jesus talks about suffering. All of this is in Luke chapter 9. He even is transfigured on the mountain. This is in Luke chapter 9. But the Bible says there was some reasoning among them. And reasoning is, is a polite way of saying there arose an argument between the disciples. What were they arguing about? The Bible says they were arguing as to who is the greatest among them. Who really is the best? Huh. Group dynamics. Are with Anytime you get a group of people, there's bound to be some level of competition. I mean, who really is the best tennis player? Is it uh, Martina Navratilova? Is it Venus Williams? Who, who's the best fighter? Is it... Is it Mike Tyson, is it Evander Holyfield? Who really, really is the overall greatest basketball players? I mean, is it Kobe Bryant or is it LeBron James or is it Michael Jordan? There's something about us that is interested in who is the GOAT. And for those of you who don't know what the GOAT means, the GOAT stands for what? All right, I see some people know that, especially the, the, some of the women was like, the GOAT, what's the GOAT, the Billy GOAT? But some of these ladies over here that are sport, where are the ladies who like sports? The ladies who like, to, who could watch a good game and you know what's going on. All right. Where are you? I mean, you like to watch the game. All right, all right, all right. When we was growing up, my mom used to watch basketball. She wouldn't watch the whole season, but when the Lakers was in the finals, she'd be sitting there in the living room, holding her hands up, hoping they hit the basketball shot. Anyway, uh, she didn't know which way the goal was. But anyway, that's all right. She was still in the game. Nevertheless, the greatest of all time. That's what they were fighting over. Who is going to be in charge? Who? And they had the greatest with them. It's so crazy. How you can be looking to be the greatest of anything and you are standing next to the greatest. Jesus Christ is the greatest of all time, beyond time, before time, after time. And they still want to know who can be the greatest. I guess they was looking to see who is coming next. And we've got to be careful in trying to establish ourselves as being greater than anyone and Jesus is going to jack them up and give them a lesson or two. The Bible says that they were talking about one another. They saw somebody casting out devils and John said, Jesus, I want to tell you something. On our way here to church, we saw this man casting out devils and we told him, stop doing that. He was casting them out in your name, but he don't go to our church. Let me break that down for you. He was casting out devils. He was casting them out in the name of Jesus, but he don't go to our church. Unless you think John is off, that same off spirit is still present in the world today. That we believe unless somebody go to our church, unless somebody wear the titles that we wear, unless somebody dress like we dress and talk like we dress, God ain't in that. We're so quick to say what God ain't in. Point number one is God is using more than you. Oh, y'all ain't hear me right here. I said, God, that's, that's, that's a good place to give God some kind of praise. I said, God is using more than you. He said in John chapter 10, verse 16, I got sheep that you don't even know about. Sometimes you get that Elijah spirit where you feel like it's only me, God, it's only me. Oh, no, no, no. Somebody else is praising God. Somebody else is giving God glory. In churches all over the Bahamas today, it ain't just in Golden Gates. In churches all over the Bahamas, in churches all over the Caribbean, in churches all over the world, people are lifting up their hands and giving God praise and glory. That's why since you're in a church and you got an opportunity, the fact of the matter is why are you worrying about them folk that are out there? Your hands could be lifted. You could be getting God for yourself. 
and giving God some kind of worthy praise instead of analyzing everything. We got the spirit of analyzing in the church. So John said, Jesus, I analyzed the whole situation and I figured out I had to rebuke him. Now what is interesting to me is in this same text, the Bible says in verse number 38, a man of the company cried out saying, Master, I beseech thee upon to help my son. A man came to Jesus early in the chapter. Listen to this. I can turn this dangerous curve, go in the bush for a minute and can come back out. This man came to Jesus and said, listen, I need you to help my only son. This is in verse 38. And the Bible says in verse 39, and lo, a spirit taketh him, my son. This spirit comes across him and suddenly he cries out and tears himself. He got a demon inside him. He's bruising himself and the spirit hardly leaves him. Listen to verse 40. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out and they could not not what John is just saying later on that this man was casting out demons and he don't go to our church and John had the opportunity to cast some demons out early and couldn't do it could it be that the reason why you so mad at some other people is they know how to do what you can do Lord have mercy that's why you hate some people they dress because you mind because they got on something you wish you had on. You upset because they driving something you wish you could drive. You upset because they married to something you wish you was married to. Point number one, God is using more than you. Point number two, the Bible says, and it came to pass that when he should be received up, Jesus now is on his way to Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem. He has made up his mind. He's made up his mind. I'm going to Jerusalem to die. And I'm on my way there. And on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus sends them ahead to test them and sends them to a city where the Samaritans live. Now, in order to appreciate this, the Samaritans was the mixed group. There was a group in the north uh, and a group in the south. When Israel first got free, there was Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And Israel in the north, when they had that situation, they had, the Assyrians came and they mixed with them. And when the Assyrians mixed with them, they became Samaritans. So there was half Jew, half mix up. Because when the Assyrians, uh, Assyrians joined them, then they became Samaritans. They started worshiping other gods. So we find here in the text now that, that, that Jesus sends them them to this Samaritan city and the people hate the Jews hated the Samaritans the Bible says that when the Samaritans saw Jesus wanted to come and they knew he was going down to Jerusalem because they don't like Jerusalem you see because Jerusalem and them had beef Jerusalem uh, they built their own temple when the people from Jerusalem came back and they wouldn't let the Samaritans in so what the Samaritans decided to do was they were going to go ahead and build their own temple to worship God well when the Jews saw that the Samaritans had built their temple the Jews came there one night and des desecrated their temple a few hundred years later the same thing happened the Samaritans came down to the temple and desecrated the temple in Jerusalem so there was a lot of bad blood between them huh. listen to this now huh. point number two point number one is God is using other people and I'm telling you this because in order for you to be happy in order for you to have the joy of the Lord you got to know which fight is your fight huh. so the old testament this text story tells us that the disciples got upset because the samaritans did not receive jesus in other words they were reliving that old war opening up that old wound there are some people that are fighting some wars in your life right now that don't belong to you they don't have nothing to do with you they happened long before you came the samaritans and the jews been fighting for hundreds of years so why are you going to take that on what am I trying to tell you? There's some old wars that we end up and find ourselves connected to that don't have nothing to do with you. There's some stuff on your job that you got your mouth in and got your attitude in and it ain't have nothing to do with you. How many know some of the wars that exist that's going on been all going on long before you were on the scene? Don't make me break that down. A lot of what you see happening in front of you didn't start yesterday. It started back here with your mother it started then with your grandmother and your great
great grandfather and I came to tell you got enough present problems on your hand not to have to dig up into somebody else's war and you will be so confused you'll be tied up fighting something that don't have nothing to do with you and what I've come to understand about Christians we will take on other people's burdens and other people's wars and make it our war you don't like sister so and so not because she did anything to you but because your friend told you that she said something about her 10 years ago and so now when you see her you see her through your friend's eyes like God didn't give you your own eyes I want to pause and tell somebody tonight there's some things that are going on in your life right now that God has not designed you to fight it don't have nothing to do with you you gonna have to learn how to step back and mind your own business if they want to fight over there that's their business there's some people that just love to fight they wake up to fight they look for trouble everywhere they go and if you fighting on your job and fighting on your house in your house and fighting in the church and fighting on the street fighting in the bank fighting in super value at some point you gotta stop rebuking the devil and you gotta look inside yourself and say there's something the matter with me how could you be fighting with people all the time the Bible say when your life pleases God he will make you be at peace with all men I want to talk to somebody today to tell you some of the things you're fighting right now they ain't got nothing to do with you so do me a favor and throw your hands up and let it go I don't care what old fight was going on before you came on the scene the Samaritans and the Jews fight ain't got nothing to do with you put your hand on yourself and say that ain't got nothing to do with me and if you don't know the difference you'll be caught up in a war that ain't got nothing to do with you God has given you certain tools and certain instruments and certain giftings and there are certain assignments that you'll need it for but if you use up all your arrows fighting the wrong fight God will wait till you use your last one and then send your art test to you. And when you reach back to pull in your bow to shoot something out, you ain't got nothing there. Because you've been fighting Susie fight and Mary fight and John fight. How many people know I know what my assignment is and the things that don't have nothing to do with me? You have to learn how to let them go and walk away. And that's the problem with the church. We don't know how to walk away from certain situations. But there's someone under the sound of my voice hear me in the realm of the spirit God said leave the situation alone and just walk away I wish I had 50 of y'all just to clap your hands how many folks know how to walk away that ain't got nothing to do with you thirdly and I'm moving quickly number one God is using other people number two you don't have time for old wars here's the interesting thing when you get involved with other people's wars, what you do is you create new enemies for yourself. Listen to me. Point number three. You don't have time to make new enemies. You already got natural enemies. God knows they don't like you because you look good. God knows you don't like it because you keep landing on your feet. How many people will tell the truth? I have enough enemies already. Come, say, I have enough. And if you ain't got no enemies, come, please come get ten of mine. But you left, you get to a certain age in your life where you don't need that stress. I can't take on another set of enemies. In fact, the time I take to have you as an enemy is the time I can't build what God has assigned for me to build. The time I take to be fighting you is the time I can be making sure my kids got their education. Are you kidding me? The time I take to be fighting you is the time I can be working overtime so I can buy myself a house. The time I take to be fighting you is the time I can be walking down Cable Beach and losing these 25 pounds I need to lose. I I don't have time for no more new enemies I know who my enemy is the moment I gave my life to God I became an enemy of Satan and fighting him is my full-time job so you my brother and you my sister look at the person next to you and tell him I don't have time for another enemy oh no Jesus said why are you worrying but this man who casting out these demons if he ain't your enemy, then he could be your friend. Because obviously he has something you need. 
And what he had was the name of Jesus. The man who was casting out the devils. Nobody knows who he is because he didn't need a title. All he needed was the name of Jesus. And you'll be surprised how many church folk are jealous of you. They don't even know. You even ain't got no name. You don't have no title. And they're jealous of how you live and jealous of how you walk. Don't be jealous of somebody. Figure out what it is that they're doing that's causing them to have the victory. And if John had just imitated this man. John said he cast out demons using the name of Jesus and the demons began to come out maybe it was that John was using his own name because they were trying to figure out who was going to be the greatest but when you work and work it in Jesus name God will give you the victory point number one God is using more than you point number two in these last five minutes is I don't have time for old wars point number three I don't have time to fight no new enemies thank you my brother I don't have time for new new enemies Luke chapter 9 verse 54 and they're gonna put it up on the screen I'm gonna turn this last curve and I'm gonna take my seat and the Bible says when his disciples James and John saw this Lord what will thou have us to do do you want us to call down fire from heaven in other words John and James said Jesus since they didn't let you in the church Jesus since they didn't receive you into the Samaritan town what we want to do is get permission from you this mic is ringing a little bit what I want you to do is call down fire and I want you to destroy them Lord have mercy because they didn't receive Jesus listen to me if somebody don't receive you that is their right and God has to give people the opportunity to have free choice but I want you to see John and James now they can't even cast out a demon but now they want to call down fire fire demon from heaven Lord Jesus you don't have no fire and you don't have no heaven to call down no fire on nobody and we got Christians sitting up in here trying to be so righteous calling down fire on everybody and Jesus the Bible says rebuke them now notice who they're comparing themselves to the Bible says they say should we call down fire like Elijah called fire down they're putting themselves in the class of a prophet that is higher than them and that's what the Christians do too often you think more highly of yourself than you ought to we walk in here believing we're so puffed up we walk in here believing that we're so wonderful and that God got to use us and you're on a level that you're not long level or that you're not on but I hear the Holy Ghost saying to the pastor right on down humble yourself in the sight of God and if you humble yourself God will find a way to exalt you if you stay where God put you and don't try be more than you are where you are will be more than enough for God to get the glory out of your life why are you trying to climb the ladder why are you trying to get some more position why are you trying to get more recognition Susie Smith and John Brown ain't got no title but when they lay their hands on the sick they come to and recover and when they speak to demons the demons got to flee I'd run from the title and I'd run towards the anointing point 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 number four you gotta focus yourself in the fight and the Bible said Jesus turned to his disciples these disciples that he loved these disciples that he fed these disciples that he called and the Bible said Jesus looked John in the eye and rebuked John and said John there's another spirit working in you sisters and brothers the problem with the church is we can't take a little bit of rebuke I don't know what family you came from the problem with us is we'd rather be outside children we'd rather act like bastards but the Bible says the one that the father loves is the one that he chastens and every now and then Jesus got to jack you up and the question is after he rebukes you can you still praise him after he tell you you got that spirit in you that is not of God do you get another attitude 
and join another church but can you take the rebuke of God a part of walking with Jesus means that you gotta face a strong leader and a strong leader every now and then has to rebuke you and get you back in line it's the tree that he has to prune to guard it in order to get the prune the tree to grow right where are the folks that are say I'm glad that the Lord rebuked me I'm glad that he chastens whom he loves I'm glad that God has the power to set me right he looked at those disciples and he rebuked them and identified that there's another spirit and the truth is you can fight the wrong fight when you have the wrong spirit inside of you you can have the Holy Ghost but be touching some things that are connected a wrong spirit to you Lord create in me a clean heart and renew within us look at somebody and say the right spirit in other words every now and then the enemy will cause you to be connected to the wrong spirit you didn't mean to you didn't know how but James and John with all their good intentions because they lived in a fleshly body was connected to the wrong spirit and Jesus he rebuked that spirit and every now and then God got to send somebody by to rebuke that spirit in you to rebuke that spirit in me I rebuke that spirit that don't want to worship God I rebuke that spirit that don't want to give God praise I rebuke that spirit that don't want to live right look at your neighbor and say it's a rebuke and I love it, 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 I love it now folk ain't gonna say amen with this because they want to do what they want to do but if you're gonna be aligned with Jesus you're gonna have to take a little rebuke the Bible says in the next verse they say Samaritans won't receive us let's go to the next town leave them alone I want to tell someone leave them people alone leave them to God you have no fight to fight. Anyone don't receive you? Shake the dust off your sandals. Look at your name and say, keep it moving. No enemies. No hard feelings. No I mad at you. You could see someone in the distance and get them to have the biggest hail. Hey, that's you. Y'all ain't got to shop together. Hey, 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 hey. And you're moving, you know. That's how you, how you, how you. Tell them I say hi. I'm trying to help you live your happiest life. Look at your neighbor and say, no enemies. You don't have time for that. Everyone standing, the assignment is too great. The disciples were fighting the wrong fight. And I have got to understand that if Jesus sent them that to that Samaritan town, Jesus knew he would be rejected there. But he sent them to test them to see how they would respond. And they failed that test. They called down fire. I want to tell somebody who's been calling down fire on people all week. You know when they make you mad on your job, kill them, Jesus. Kill them in the name of Jesus. I can't get no help up in here. There's some folk in your family, you praying for them. Lord, take them out. Show them I'm the real one. And I wouldn't even talk, but in church, you're hoping somebody else gets sick. No, 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 no. Jesus rebuked that spirit because he would one day go to the cross for them same Samaritans. He was on his way to Jerusalem, and guess what? The no that they gave Jesus shortened the trip to Jerusalem. Sometimes God will put a no in your life to keep you focused. Sometimes God tells you no to get you there faster. Sometimes God will tell, tell you no so you don't have a pit stop and be distracted. I want to preach to somebody who has just had a big no in your life. Ah, uh, don't get discouraged. 
the no in the little Samaritan town can't compare to the yes that's coming in Jerusalem. Look at your neighbor and say, stop fighting it, stop fighting. Well, sisters and brothers, we've run out of time yet again. I pray, though, that the Word of God blessed you richly, as I'm sure the praise and worship did. Listen, as we move through this rest of 2022, our attitude, our helpful and positive and upbeat thinking of what God is about to do, He's about to blow your very natural mind. Listen, what you're feeling right now is what we all feel, and it's the presence of the Lord. Perhaps you are a person that's watching us and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. We invite you to get to know Him today. If that's you, just say this quick sinner's prayer with me. Father God, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Come into my life and change me, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you prayed that simple prayer with me today, my brother, my sister, here's the good news. You're already a part of the family of God. Now, the next step in your salvation process is to become a part of a Bible-based believing church. And we believe that Golden Gates is such a place. Now, there are a few announcements that claim our attention. We want you to sit back, observe them, and pay attention to them, take note of them, and be a part of all that's going on here at the gates. And I'll be back on the other side with a wrap-up. Good morning, Golden Gates. I'm Dakia Scott. We are in the third Sunday in the month of March, and we would like to say thank you for being in service today. A special thank you to the group Ignited for ministering in song in today's service. Now here are your news and announcements for the week ahead. Friday nights are for fun, fellowship, and sometimes food. Drop in this and every Friday night from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and take part in our open discussions, games, moments in the word and prayer. If you are 12 years and older, we'd love to have you join us. If you're an individual who loves helping, serving, and giving back to those in need, then our outreach ministry is where you should be. The outreach ministry is looking for persons who are interested in being their brothers and sisters keeper. If you are interested, you can receive an application from one of the ushers or contact director Sister Faris Camp at 4680101. During the Lent season for the next 40 days, starting today, date Sunday the 13th of March 2022, the Outreach Ministry will be accepting new or gently worn clothing and shoes for boys and girls ages 0 to 10 years old, and baby supplies such as pampers, wipes, pull-ups, milk, etc. to assist those in the need throughout our community. Remember, we are living through our giving. The first prayer conclave will be held on Saturday, April the 2nd from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at the church. Paging all church leaders, including ministers and deacons in training, praise team, intercessors, and the fine arts ministry. Please register immediately after service today with Deacon Sandra Fountain. When you hear that music, I know you know what time it is. It's celebration time, and we would like to say a happy birthday and happy anniversary to the following persons. Gerard Lightborn, Valencia King, Elder Inez Fawkes, Deacon Heidi Walking, and Angelica McIntosh. And happy anniversary goes out to Arana and Denise Pyram, who would be celebrating 14 years of marriage. May God continue to bless you on your very special day as you celebrate. Our church is on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. To find us, type in Golden Gates World Outreach Ministries on Facebook and YouTube. And simply type Golden Gates Church on Instagram and look for our logo. If you want to be a part of the church's WhatsApp broadcast chat, 
where you will only receive information that's relevant to the church, just store the WhatsApp number, that's 434-6770, in your phone and send a WhatsApp text message saying, add me and let the updates roll in. And just before we wrap things up here at Gates News Studio, we would like to remind you of our Monday night prayer with Archbishop Ross Davis and Pastor Trent Davis at 8 p.m. And let's not forget our Thursday night Bible study with Pastor Trent Davis at 8 p.m. Once again, I'm Jakia Scott. Stay safe, everyone. Well, sisters and brothers, that's all the time we have for today. We pray that this broadcast was a blessing to you, that something was said and something that was done inspired your life. Well, the last thing we'd like to share with you before we leave is an opportunity to sow into the ministry. Listen, there are four ways that you can do it here at The Case. You can download on your mobile device the GiveLify app and then look for Golden Gates World Outreach Ministries and plant your seed that way. Or if you're part of the archipelago of islands here in the Bahamas, you can transfer from your bank account with online banking into our First Caribbean account, and that information is appearing on your screen right now. Thirdly, you can always drop by the church through the week. Somebody will be here between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday through Friday, to receive your love gift and to pray with you and thank God for the financial blessings that God has in store for you. And then finally, you can be our very special guest next Sunday at 8.30 in the will of the Lord. Bring your offering then and sow it along with your praise and your worship and your gratitude to God. Either way, let's be a blessing to the ministry. The Bible says that when we sow, that God promises to open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings. Well, I speak and I declare that this is going to be a great week for you. That the depression and loneliness and all of the vicissitudes of life will begin to lift and God will begin to shift you and your family right to where he will have you to be. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll see you again next week right here, same place, in the will of the Lord. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Run the vision, let the enemy see you running for God. Only what you do, for God will last. Golden Gates, I came to announce to you that this is our running season. Touch your neighbor and say, tie up your laces, baby. We're fixing to get ready to run.